Hey everyone, and welcome to another Jamovi tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to do the second of the two-part Chi-Square series. In this tutorial, we're going to be talking about Chi-Square Test of Independence. As always, I am using the latest build as of recording for Jamovi, and with some general bug fixes and improvements, we are now at 1.6.7 on macOS. So let's open up some data and get going. Okay, so here I have the same randomness data set that I did in the previous video for chi-squared goodness of fit. So for this test of independence, I just found it by going to open data library, and here is the randomness data set. So here it is. All we have are 200 subjects, their first choice, and the kind of suit on the card, and their second choice, on the suit of the card. So one poll and then another poll. And then the null hypothesis about randomness would be that your first choice of card and the suit you get does not impact the second choice of card that you pick. So we're going to see whether or not this randomness null hypothesis holds true. So uh, we are going to start with frequencies. You go up to frequencies, and here you go into contingency tables. So we have uh, our independent samples, our chi-squared test of association. Now this is another word that you would see instead of independence. Uh, in the textbook that I use, it is a chi-squared test of independence, but it does say in that book that you might see it as the chi-squared test of association. So we're going to click on that. And it's going to bring up the very simple contingency tables. Uh, not a lot going on when you compare it to places, the to modules like an OVA and regression, and, eh, etc. So we are going to put our two variables. ID is not going to mean anything here, but we're going to put uh, choice one into rows since it's the first choice, and then we're going to put choice two into columns. Now, if you had just a data set with counts already created, you would put those in the optional thing here. And another interesting thing that you can do here is you can create layers to this contingency table because contingency tables can do a little bit more than just give you a simple chi-square test here. So here we have our contingent before choosing any statistics or what is going on in those cells i want to take a look at the results here so we have our contingency table or our cross tabulation table because you, it, coming from spss this would be cross tabs in spss the same way you would get at the chi-square test of independence or association and so this is our our four by four table uh, with our choice one uh, going along the rows and choice two coming along the columns here. And we have total uh, a total row and a total column, each grand summing to 200. This is a nice looking APA table that you could easily take and put into an EPA paper and uh, just modify some of the, uh, the silliness here and capitalize it etc. And you can have a nice cross tabs table here, a nice contingency table. So these are our counts for each of these uh, suits for the first choice and the second choice. And it looks like uh, if we take a look at the chi-square, we have chi-square, uh, we have a value here. This is a gigantic, gigantic chi-square value with a degrees of freedom value, which generally speaking is the amount of rows minus one multiplied by the amount of columns minus one. So the freedom to vary here is three minus one. The freedom to vary on the columns is four minus one. So three times three is nine. And with an N of 200, this p-value is quite small. So what does that mean? Well, the null hypothesis is that these two uh, variables are independent of one another, but it looks like they're not. That We reject the null hypothesis. They are not independent. Now we can get additional statistics here, and there are a lot of additional statistics you can get, which is uh, the reason for you know having layers here. Um, you can get the uh, chi-square continuity correction, likelihood ratio. You could get Fisher's exact 
Z-Test, which will be which would be added here depending on what you were doing. Z-Test for prom, uh, difference in pr two proportions does not apply here because it's only for two by two tables. Now, if you had the hypothesis set where one group is going to be higher than the other group, you would do that. Um, I'm assuming group one is rows and group two is columns. If I change this, what happens here? Yeah, uh, nothing happens. So there we go. Um, you can get your um, confidence intervals if you want to on your rows. You can get your difference of proportions, relative risk, log, og, log odds ratio. It's a very hard word to say. Or the uh, odds ratio and then the log of that ratio. But this stuff is only for 2 by 2 only. So we have a 4 by 4 so it's not none of this is going to work and that's why you do not see confidence intervals on this table. We can also get our contingency coefficients and phi and Kramer's V if you wanted to. This is a non-parametric test anyways. These are just different statistics about around the same thing. Now ordinal you can get gamma and Kendall's tau B. Now cells we can um, also include our expected counts and we can see where we uh, undercounted and over uh, counted as, as far as our observed versus our expected. Now uh, is not a very complicated equation but it, these values are gotten through looking at what these proportions should be uh, based on the amount of information that we have here uh, for hearts, diamonds, clubs, and, and and all of that. And you can get rows, columns, and total percentages. This makes the table a little bit unreadable if you were to choose all of them. I would not suggest this for an APA-style presentation, but it is nice to get. And you can see how um, getting clubs on the first choice generally impacts the expectation of getting clubs on the second choice or diamonds or hearts hearts or spades and that holds again for diamonds hearts and spades choosing first and then what you get second which is strange right because this should be a, a, a test of randomness there shouldn't be you should be getting uh, a random a random suit and you don't because you would expect the null hypothesis to be like, yeah, randomness is independent. These are all independent. But apparently not selecting card suits. And that's how you do a chi-square test of independence in Jamovi. If you like this content, please leave a like. If you want to see more, please subscribe. Leave your comments, suggestions, and feedback down below. I appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Bye.